Today, we're going to be discussing suspension and specifically anti-roll bar or sway bar tuning. Now, if you've watched my video on tires, you'll know that there's a load sensitivity effect on tires. And as the load increases, their coefficient of friction or effective coefficient of friction becomes less. Of course, whenever a vehicle goes through a corner, it will undergo some degree of weight transfer as its center of gravity is above the ground or where its tire contact patch is. So this weight transfer will cause an increased load on the outside tires and a decreased load on the inside tires. So it means that your outside tires are gonna be operating around here where this is the coefficient of friction and this is the normal force. And the inside tires are going to be over here. So we can see that those inside ones are in a good spot, but the outside ones not so much. And if we were to average these two points, we can see that you're going to end up with an effective coefficient of friction for the whole car of somewhere around here. We can see that that is suboptimal when compared to what it would be if it was just a singular tire. Now, what's the meaning of all this? Basically, what it means is that the more weight transfer you have, the less grip you have. Now, everyone who's watching this video probably already kind of knows that. But the important thing when it comes to car tuning and handling and balance is making sure that you have equivalent grip on the front of the rear. Well, not so much equivalent grip as it feels like equivalent grip and your slip angle is somewhat equivalent. So the car feels balanced. Of course, primarily you should be trying to sort this out using your caster, your camber, your tire setup, your weight distribution, all that stuff. But in the event that that's not going so well, cars are usually fitted with anti-roll bars. The beauty of the anti-roll bar is that you can adjust its stiffness and by adjusting its stiffness, you can adjust the distribution of the weight transfer. Let's consider a hypothetical, okay? If I have my car here, let's say it's 50-50 weight distribution, the anti-roll bar springing's even, so there's a constant or even weight distribution on both axles. Now, if I took this front anti-roll bar and disconnected it, okay? So I've cut it there. When the car rolls, if we assume the springs are making no contribution to roll, which is a bit of a lie, but let's roll with it, you can see that with this cut, there's not going to be any weight transfer between these two tires because there's nothing to transfer weight across them. It's just going to free pivot. So this weight transfer still has to occur somewhere in the vehicle, right? So this one at the rear will be passing all the weight across the rear axle. What does this mean? This means that the rear axle has more weight transfer than the front. Now that means that it's operating at a less optimal coefficient of friction overall. This means that as we soften the front anti-roll bar, we are robbing grip from the rear, or if we stiffen the rear anti-roll bar. It's all about the difference between the two. So this grip gets robbed from here, and this now operates at a more optimal point. That means that we can tune our handling front and rear. That's the fundamentals of how anti-roll bar tuning works for most road cars, and a lot of people generally get away with that. I had a friend with the WRX, and we were adjusting his anti-roll bars, and he picked quite a stiff rear anti-roll bar and everything was quite fine. But anti-roll bar tuning has a little bit of an extra element on top of that. A roll bar is like a spring. It has a stiffness and it has effectively a frequency or a response time. Your whole suspension system has a frequency or a response time. And the anti-roll bar will only affect the roll frequency response. Now, this may sound a bit technical, but what it basically means is stiffening your anti-roll bar increases your frequency. So it basically makes your car a little bit harder to drive because you have to react a bit faster to compensate if there's any issues. But it's important that your roll frequencies between the front and the rear are matched correctly or otherwise you can end up with some handling issues. For example, you may turn into a corner, the roll frequencies of the rear is really quite high. So the rear may get up to grip really fast or lose grip really fast depending on how you put a damper set up and you could end up with a car with, say, snap oversteer, it could have turn in understeer. There's a whole bunch of different characteristics you can expect if you don't have a good match between your front and rear roll frequencies. And I'll go into that a little bit further. This here is a plot of roll response versus time. So this is your, um, your effective grip force, and this is your time response. So if we look at the front axle, if you watch my video on Ackman, you'll see an explanation of yaw, okay? 
and your moment is basically something you need to turn the car into the corner. Now, you only start the corner with the front tires. That gives you your initial your inertia. So from the start time of the corner, you'll start putting it on the fronts, okay? The rears haven't even kicked until you're at enough rear slip angle that they're feeling the grip, okay? So the front goes up, then the rear starts to kick. But by the time you're in the corner, you want them to be both gripping at roughly the same sort of rate. The net result of this is, is that the rear actually has to get up to speed, so to speak, faster than the front. Now, this means that it needs a higher roll frequency to get up to speed. So if you were to do something to say lower its roll frequency, you would be acting in a not optimal regime because your rear would come on to tap a bit late into the corner, which means that it would end up coming around a bit as you've turned in and it could just lead to a car that feels a little bit skittish. So this is just a reason as to why you should look at the roll frequency as well. Of course, for road cars, this doesn't really matter. Most of them aren't actually running that stiff compared to a track car, but for a high-end track car that's being pushed to its limits, you need to consider this as it is very important. So that's the basics of anti-roll bar or sway bar tuning. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next time. Thank you.